Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Today, let's talk cybersecurity. Now, of course, security inherently means we're trying to hide something, right? We're trying to hide away some concept or some idea that prevents someone from accessing something private. Now, as it turns out, not everything is equal. Something should be hidden and something should not. This is where the topic of security through obscurity comes into play. Now, one fairly fundamental fallacy is, what if I tried to hide away how I tried to protect my data? Let's say um, I have a database and I'm going to try and name my column strange things. The thought here is that if an attacker doesn't understand how my system works, it would be more secure. That is what we call security through obscurity. It's obscure, they don't understand it. This, as it turns out, is not safe, at least not if it's used on its own. You can't just rely on the fact that, you know, someone doesn't understand how your system works and therefore cannot attack it. The reason for this is simply because it is not rigorous enough. If someone can eventually figure it out, then, well, you're in danger, right? So it's not rigorous, it's not great. Compare this to the existing techniques that we have. For example, the ways in which we encrypt information, the ways in which we, you know, convert passwords before storing them. All of these are open techniques. What they hide away is not how it's done. In fact, that is public knowledge. Since we don't have that as a crutch to rely on, we have to ensure that whatever techniques we use are secure by a technical definition. So for example, our encryption and our password hashing is secure because of the mathematical operations that are performed on it. These operations are considered difficult to reverse. In the context of hashing, these are well, just impossible to reverse. In the context of encryption, these can only be reversed with a specific key. In that context, the method to reverse it is also public knowledge. But without the right key, you will never get the right result. So what you're keeping secret now is the key itself, right? It's a special string of text or a bunch of numbers that help the process work. But the process itself is known and anyone can use that process. In fact, all of what I've just said boils down to one thing called Kirchhoff's Principle. Essentially, what they've said is that if everything is known about a cryptography system, well, of course, except the key itself, it should still be safe. Again, what we're trying to enforce here is that the system has to be technically secure. So if everything about a system is known and yet it still protects your information, that tells us that it is rigorous. It has done something technically correct. So that is something we should aim for in our cryptography systems. This video comes about from a discussion that I've seen on the comment section uh, on the video we've done recently on steganography. That one is essentially security through obscurity, right? It's in fact not security at all if you think about it. As a brief recap in steganography, we would take some information and embed it inside another piece of information. So while it appears hidden, it's just because your adversary doesn't know it's there. If they know it's there, it's only a matter of time before they figure out how to extract the information, right? There is no actual security there. Of course, we can encrypt our information before putting it there. And what that means is the obscurity part is not the only thing we use to protect our information. That of course makes things better. So yeah, that's all there is for this particular episode of Friday Minis. This is a very important topic in the area of cybersecurity because sometimes our first instinct is to do security through obscurity. But it's important to understand that that is not enough. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.